Just a quick update, I moved into my parents' garage for the winter months, and uh, a few design changes. I've been going back and forth between composite for the body, composite for the body, carbon fiber wrap, fiberglass over honeycomb panels to make that sandwich composite panel, but even though I am saving about 30% of the weight, by the time I get into that and learn that new skill, uh, I just don't want to try it for the first time on this project. So I'm going to stick with the aluminum composite panels you see behind me for the shell of the body. I'll probably use that foaming or pink rigid foam for the inside, and we'll continue on. Also, reconsider where I'm going to put the big battery, because I've been doing a lot of test rides with my dog Stella and my Polex cargo bike. i got a great deal to use one of those. And she loves sitting up front, and it has a 400 pound load capacity, including the rider, so I can put almost an 11 kilowatt battery, which I intended to put the frame up right here, in the actual front of the cargo bay on the bike itself, and that would reduce the weight of the bike and get me a more equivalent weight between the actual bicycle that I'm riding and myself, and the dog and the load, and the load behind me, both roughly around 300 plus pounds. So these are the things I'm thinking about. Just thought I'd do a quick little video to let you know where I'm at. If you're following along, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll happy, happily try to address them. And if you have any suggestions, I'm all yours. I'm just, I don't have any particular skill of fabrication. I'm just trying to figure this out as you go. So onwards, upwards. All right, so I'm trying to just lay out the shape here for the top roof line part of the frame. And then I realize I better uh, double check the axle alignment here one last time. Uh, I think I've done it 50 times by now. And then with that done, um, I'm screwing the axles into the frame temporarily. Uh, I've got them C clamped down, but just really getting the stainless steel bolts in there. And I'll come back to that later. So just had to get sort of experimental. My dad's got a, a one board and two ladders. So uh, that'll have to do for my working platform. Yeah, this worked out all right with some stabilizing at the back. So I'm just tack welding the fender sections now. Um, figured I'd start there. Grinding out the inside welds while it's easy before I get them installed. And those gusset joints I welded in up closer to the wheel there on the corner, they, they pulled the frame out of a square a little bit. So each of these two pieces of the frame are gonna be a little different. I bought these monster squares, not totally convinced it was worth the, like $400. Um, they've got these little tabs where you can level material, but uh, at this point I'm not really using them much. You know, with aluminum, everything, you're kind of learning how it twists and pulls with the welds and the sequence of where to weld first. Um, and you just have to do it to sort of get an understanding of of how it's going to pull and hopefully pull itself back into shape and square for the most part. So things are looking pretty good. Um, you know, tolerance of 16th of an inch, sometimes an eighth of an inch here and there, but nothing I don't think I can work with. That ACM panel I'm going to be putting on the sides is pretty flexible, but it's lining up nice here. And I'm just, uh, that piece I'm clamping on just to level it flush with the lower frame section. Just make sure that surface for the AC, uh, ACM panel is, is nice and flush. So here's, it's pretty cool getting the front, uh, getting the shape, you get a sense of what it's gonna actually look like. Um, this change from my original design, I created that angle up front just to give, my, give myself a little more headroom. A little tricky managing it on your own, but it's possible. I've got it clamped to that, that piece uh, in the middle there and then at the back. And that sets me up for tack welding this. Whoops, no gas. Didn't turn the gas on and that's what happens. That's always always good to start with a piece of scrap. So that's part of my process now. Before I begin my first welds of the day, I got a piece of scrap and I can make the mistake there instead of on the workpiece. Here I am improvising. I gotta pull the frame in a little bit just to keep this member, this cross member secure while I weld it on. So I'm just using a bungee cord. And then I get that tacked up. One drawback to using a bungee cord is it gets hot and it can burn right through, burn through half of these 
you know, my dad's gonna be pissed. So now moving on to I'm trying to figure out like a rough 24 inch on center frame spacing. And now getting to work on the ACM panel. These panels, I got like six of them, including two five by 10 sheets for the sides for 70 bucks from a guy who ran a sign business. These panels are most often used in, in signage. And that's a triple crown sticker that, that peels off with a hot gun, which you'll see later. So pretty stoked that I got this deal, 70 bucks. I mean, to buy it new would have been close to $1,500 Canadian with tax, around a thousand bucks US dollars. So I'm just cutting off the sections for the fender, a sort of fender wall on the inside, or wheel well, I guess you would call it. Lots of moments where I just stop and think and wondering, you know, am I doing it wrong? <laughs> and then you just carry on. And it's almost faster just to plow ahead and make your mistakes and the course correct versus trying to figure it all out in your head for a one-off sort of prototype first time project like this. So I'm using a, a V groove rotor bit here and I'm testing the one that I got from my tool library and it's, it's all gummy. It's not gonna be sufficient as you can see. That's way too rough, not happy with that. So I went to Home Depot and I got a Diablo um, and and there's the difference. You can see how much cleaner it is with a $42 Diablo V-Groove bit. That said, there's a specific router bit you can get for cutting this ACM panel, which I did buy because it creates a, a little two millimeter gap at the sort of the nose or the, the bottom of that groove. And that helps the panel bend, I think, more easily without breaking. This was okay as long as you bent it one way, but if you bent it back and forth a few times, it would snap off. That aluminum sheeting on either side of the sandwich panel is, is just really, really thin. So the aluminum composite panel that I'm using is four millimeters thick or about an eighth of an inch. It's got quite a bit of a flex to it, but I talked to some other guys doing YouTube videos uh, for their truck campers and whatnot. And they said that once they had it on the frame, fastened with the 3M adhesive, it was solid. So this is what I was talking about with the hot gun, just peeling off a little at a time. It's not too bad. It just takes you know, a few minutes with the heat gun and, and then you can see it comes, comes off real nice. And, and underneath the material is just brand new, basically. Just beautiful, shiny white. So just prepping the grinding off those welds before I, I start to install these uh, wheel well covers or that part of the body, whatever you want to call it. Just grinding off the rough edges here. So I've kind of figured out the process of how to line up the, the cuts. And then I'm just going to fit this by hand here. Because as I said, the aluminum does kind of stretch and pull a bit. I don't want to rely just on my SketchUp model anymore. At this point, I'm pretty much going manual. I found the easiest way, like here I'm kind of trying to, I'm measuring and I'm trying to figure out how to get the router on there. Just resting the, the tip of the bit right on your mark and then leveling your guide. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just resting it and then I've got my piece of three quarter inch square tubing. And then I'm going to use my 90 degree angle, my angle finder set to 90 degrees. And then I'm just going to get my, uh, my parallel line that way. Okay. So that's it. Here's just a shot of the SketchUp model that I started with. I spent so many hours on this model. And then of course, many parts have changed lots of little adjustments, but it's been really great as a reference and to get the basic dimensions. My next step is I'm trying to figure out these stabilizer drop down legs. They're a definite must have. If you can let me know where to find them, I would be so grateful. All right, that's it for the video. Thanks for tagging along. If this is of interest to you, hope your projects are going really well. Have a great day. See you next time.